Hello and welcome to another makeup mashup video. So in these videos I like to take a palette that is already in my collection that might not be working to its full potential for me personally and I like to change it up and uh, remove some of the shadows, add in some others so that it is a color combination or formula or whatnot that really really works for me and that brings me lots of inspiration every time I want to use it. So in this video, we are going to be customizing the BH Cosmetics Zodiac Cancer Palette. So when they started releasing these earlier in the year, I was really, really excited. And I know they had been receiving a lot of negative feedback about the color combinations and how boring they were. But there, I felt there was the possibility for this palette to be just a really great everyday grab-and-go palette when I just wanted a really simple go-to look. And in theory, I think it could have been that. I actually do like the color combination that they chose. I like this more kind of peachy side. I like this more teal and cool tone side. But I recently used this in one of my weekly makeup challenges, and I will link that above, where I used this palette for the entire week. And in doing so, I discovered what holes it had. So which shades maybe didn't perform to their full potential, which shades I wish I had in here that I wanted to reach for that I didn't have. And now that I have all that information and I know what I would like this palette to be, uh, we are going to be doing some, some additions. So first what I like to do in these videos is I like to swatch the shadows that are already in the palette so that you can see what they look like and then also explain which shadows I'm going to take out and why. So we are going to start at the top here and it's kind of this matte neutral coral and I actually do really like this shade in this palette. I find it works really well as a transition shade especially with these more warm tones over here. I use this quite a bit during the week when I use this palette so this one will be staying. Next is this Silver Shimmer. Now I had a lot of hope for this. I thought it was going to be like a really, really gleaming silver shade. Can you see how kind of lackluster that is? It really, really has to be built up. It's very, very sheer. And for what I would use that shade for, I would really like it as, um, you know, maybe all over the lid or even an inner corner highlight. It just does not perform the way that I would want a shade like this to perform. So this is actually one that I will be removing. Next is this lighter peach shimmer and kind of the same as the silver. This had a lot of potential for this palette. I could have done some, I actually did try to do some looks where I had a really nice bright peach lid, but can you see how you can barely see that shade? It's just, it's very, very sheer. Um, it doesn't build up very well to be very intense. And I just feel like there's something could be in its place that would serve better. Next is this darker peach shimmer, and I think this is probably the one that disappoints me the most because I really, when you look at it in the pan, it just looks like it's going to be this beautiful foiled shade. And look at that. Like it's almost like it's a glitter top, like a glittery topper. Um, there's sparkle there, but that really doesn't have any base pigment. So I couldn't really use this over the lid. I couldn't really use this um, on the outer corner kind of to not deepen a look, but to just give more dimension to the outer lid. It really just doesn't do anything. And I think the shade itself had a lot of potential for this palette, but just its performance is very, very lackluster. So that one will be coming out. So the next four shades, I'm actually going to be keeping every single one of them, but we will swatch them so that you can see. So this one here is kind of a lighter teal metallic, and you can just see the difference. So that was one swipe, and look at how pretty that is compared to these. Like I think I had to layer those like three times, and you can still barely see them. This was one time, and you get this beautiful kind of steel gray teal color. I use this quite a bit in the week that I use this palette, and I really, really do enjoy that shade. I find it looks really, really pretty with my blue eyes, so that one will be staying. Next is this shade here, and it almost looks like it would be similar to this one, but it has a more purpley 
base to it. So it's more of a purple, um, a purpley teal shift, which I think is really pretty. Uh, it is a little, it's didn't go, it doesn't go on as easily as this one. You do have to layer it a bit, but when you do layer it, you can get a really, really pretty uh, kind of purpley, dark purpley shift. I've used this on the outer lid just to kind of add dimension to a look. I've used this on the lower lash line. I've used this all over the lid. It's a really pretty color and I do like it, so that one will be staying. Next is this matte black with a little bit of sparkle and normally this is the type of shade that I would absolutely be removing from a palette. Uh, I don't find I have a ton of use for matte blacks. I wish companies would stop putting glitter in their mattes. I just don't find them useful that way. But I have to say I use this one quite a bit during the week that I use this palette as a outer quarter deepening shade and also to align my upper lash line and a little bit of my lower lash line to add dimension to that area. And it worked really, really well for that. And you can see it's a really, really smooth matte black. So I will actually be keeping that one in the palette. And finally, it's more this brown matte, and again, I found that I had a lot of use for this color in this palette. Um, if you use it uh, with a light hand, it worked really well as a transition shade. I could use it as a liner. I could use it to deepen the outer corner of a look. I found it worked really well with both of these more cool tone shades as well as these warm tone shades. Uh, so yeah, this one will be staying in the palette as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is share with you the colors that I have selected to replace the ones that I was not as happy with within this palette and also swatch them and tell you why I chose those colors. So the first two are in little single pans. Now this one here is one from Essence that you can buy in a little single compact and then I just popped it out. It is magnetic. It does work on my single shadow board. It does stick to it. It's just this really pretty, it looks white, but there is a green shift to it. And I just realized I forgot to swatch this. So we're gonna swatch it together with this so I can explain why I want to include this one. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's, it's like this bright highlighter white shade, but there is like a greeny, a green shift to it, which I think is really, really pretty and unique. And it's also very bright, so it didn't take a lot to kind of build that up to a nice bright color. And that's what I like when I'm doing something in my inner corner. I like unique shades in my inner corner, but I still like them to be bright. This big shadow in the middle here is what I would typically reach for for an inner corner shade, and it's what I did reach for during the week, but it just really disappointed me. So... Compare, let's compare it to the one that I just swatched. Can you see the difference? Like this one here from the Essence Shadow is just blinding. And then it's like, where where is that one? Like you can see it at certain angles, but it just does not have the intensity that I like in an inner corner shade. You really, really have to build it and build it and build it and build it. And I don't want to do that. Even then, you can still see it's kind of sheer, the difference. And then, if you compare it to this one, so this silver one that I was kind of disappointed in, they almost do the same thing. So like, again, look at how much I have to build this. But there's barely, here's the silver, here's that baked one in the middle, there's barely any difference in those. And so if I'm going to have two shadows in a palette, I want them to serve different purposes, and these don't. These are both very sheer, they both have to be built up, they both are not intense enough for the inner corner, and they're not enough to use as a lid shade. So I am actually going to be removing this one as well. So back to my plan. What I want to actually do is take this Essence shade and use it for the center highlight shade. I think it will complement these teals and purples really, really nicely and add a really interesting dimension to the inner corner. But as you can see, I don't think there's as much product in here as in the Baked Shadow. 
So I plan on using as much as I, like I plan on using this whole pan and then if there's any kind of leftover space, I will add in a little bit of this to kind of beef this one up. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be mixing these two for this inner shade because I just think that's gonna be a really, really cool um, highlighting shade. The next one I'm going to replace is going to be this one here. And I wanna replace this with this kind of periwinkle matte. One of the things that I found this palette lacking was a matte shade that kind of wasn't, like both of these are very warm and these two colors are very, very cool. So if I wanted to do a true cool look, when I used these as a transition color, it automatically kind of gave it a warmer base. And I would really like to have a cool toned matte base to use with those shades. And I thought a shade like this would really complement them well. So because this silver is very lackluster and just doesn't, it, it doesn't work the way that it should, I'm going to be replacing that with this periwinkle kind of matte shade. This is one that I depotted from a BH Cosmetics um, all about matte palette or something. It had a whole bunch of matte shades in it. Um, but yeah, it's just a really, really pretty color. And we'll just go down here so you can see here. I think it will really complement these two shades down here really, really, really well. So you can see... So there's that kind of teal shade, there's the purple shade, and using that as a transition shade, I think will really create some very, very pretty looks. So the next two I am going to replace are these two here. And I actually do like this color with this palette, so I'm going to be replacing it with something very similar. And then this one I'm going to be replacing with something completely different. And I'm going to be replacing them with shades from this Urban Decay palette. I received this from a friend who was de-stashing a lot of her makeup collection. And I thought, I, I don't buy high-end makeup, so this was a real treat for me. But I love the case of this, but when I look at the shadows, I am just not inspired to create any looks with these. I find most of them very, very dark, and I don't use a lot of dark shadows on my lids. However, the individual shadows, there's some shadows in here that are really, really beautiful. So I've decided to use this in my makeup mashups so that if there was a shade that I really, really wanted in a palette and this has it, that I can still use these shadows, but I'm just not going to be using it as a whole, as a palette, as a whole. It's just kind of big and bulky. And again, I'm not inspired by this color story. So the two colors that I'm going to be reaching for in here are this one here. And I think this is what this peachy shade should be. So let's put this one here. This is the one from the Vice palette. And you can see there, it's this really pretty kind of rosy metallic. And then this is the one from the BH Cosmetic Cancer palette. Like, where is it? Where is it? It's, it's basically just glitter. I don't know if you can see it. It's the glitters there, but there's no base pigment. And that might be what they intended it to be, but for my makeup preferences and how I like to do my eye makeup, I have no use for this. So I'm going to be replacing it with this one here because I do like having this color in the palette, but I want it to actually show up as that color. So that's going to be going in its place there. And then what I'm going to be replacing this kind of light peachy shade with is this purple from the Vice palette. So let's swatchy swatch. So I'm going to swatch this over here next to these guys because I feel like that's why I want it in the palette. So we'll put it right there. And I think you can see, so this one is a much more vibrant like violet, but it works really well with that matte periwinkle that I want to put in. And it's also going to work really well with the teal and then this kind of darker purple. Like I think these four as a look and then you start bringing in some of these as an accent. I can ar I'm can i already inspired to create looks with these shadows where I wasn't as inspired before. So that one I'm going to be adding in as well. And I think that covers all the changes that I'm going to be making to this palette. So the next step is going to be to 
dig out the shades in this palette that I don't want anymore, and then to create um, a paste with the shades that I do want to put in, and then get them in there and press them. Mix them with alcohol, make a paste, get them in the pans, press them in the pans, and then we'll go from there. So that is the next step. So here we have the finished palette. I have finished putting all the shades in and pressing them and cleaning up around the edges a little bit. And I think this just looks like such a fun little palette. I think it still has the feel of the original palette in terms of the color story that BH was going for. But there's just a little bit more variety and I think the shades will just perform a little bit better than the other ones did. I really look forward to using this now. I would love to know what you think of my little customization and if you have one of these palettes or if you are one of these zodiac signs that hasn't come out yet, what are you hoping to see in your palette? So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fabulous day and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.